Precisamente la persona que nos acompaña hoy es un hombre que ha puesto en práctica muchas de las ideas y de las claves que nos ha transmitido ahora el Endacar, informar, implicar e imaginar. Es, sin lugar a dudas, una voz eh, representativa, una voz sumamente autorizada del profundo cambio que se está experimentando, que él supo además prever y hacernos prever a todos los demás. Desde que en 1995 publicara Virgin Digital y hasta que sorprendió, yo diría que incluso de alguna manera admiró al mundo con su proyecto, con el proyecto que nos va a presentar Juan Lector for Child. Nicolás Negroponte ha sido y es un espejo en el que muchos nos miramos para entender no solo qué está ocurriendo tal vez, qué puede llegar a ocurrir. Hoy tenemos la fortuna de contar con el profesor Negroponte la inauguración de la séptima semana de Ciencia, Tecnología e Innovación. Para él pido un aplauso. Thank you very much. I cannot speak Basque and I cannot speak Spanish, but I can speak English very slowly. <laughs> so if some people have trouble and I'm speaking too fast, raise your hand. Um, when I listen to introductions like that, the only way I can do it is by thinking it's someone else. I don't know that person. And then it'll be my turn afterwards to talk. And what I'd like to do in the time I have is what the two previous speakers did. This was very rare. In fact, I have not seen it for a long time. The two people representing civic society can get up and talk without a note, without a paper, without reading a word, without looking at a monitor, without looking at a teleprompter. And so what I heard, even though I couldn't speak the language and I couldn't hear the tone of voice, it obviously came from the heart as well as from the mind. And so innovation as a first step is where the heart and mind meet. So what I'd like to do is spend a little bit of time telling you where I think new ideas come from. And then I will show you one idea, which happens to be one I've been working on, but I will show it to you from the point of view of how it is iconoclastic, how it went against all common thought, and why I think it's so important for all of us to bring up children, to raise a society where we aren't incremental and we are contrarian, and we do ask questions all the time. I had the very good fortune of spending my whole life at MIT, which is an academic institution. And I built something called the Media Lab. It's a little bit like a foreign country. And I lived in that foreign country for about 15 years. And then when I wrote Being Digital, it wasn't that I knew something that futurists did not know. It's that I was writing a travel log. I had visited this country. I had lived in this country. So it took me six weeks with no notes, no previous sort of construction of a book to assemble a travel log of ideas about the future because the Media Lab's motto was the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And so that's what that was about and why in 1995 when that book was published many things turned out to be true not because I was smart but because the people doing the work succeeded in doing that work. And so I've always been interested in where new ideas come from. And the first answer is always that they come from differences. If you have a homogeneous society, if you have a single age group, if you have a single background, or for that matter, a single purpose, you will almost never get, ever, much innovation. And in fact, this is one 
of the problems that companies have in general. Because clearly, people in a company work for a specific corporate purpose, and they probably have, let's say, an engineering background. And when they have the opportunity to leave the company and, let's say, go to a conference, very often they go to a conference of their same peer group. So it'll be other engineers. And so you don't have, as much as you want, differences. Whereas in society, we do. You have racial differences, you have age differences, you have political differences, religious differences, and all of them are very, very important. Now, incrementalism is just step by step. And if you go step by step, you miss the big opportunities. In fact, you don't even know what you have done except that it's a little more than what was before. And incrementalism is also a product of discipline. We tell people they must be disciplined, but in truth, most creative people aren't in the normal sense disciplined. One daydreams, one speculates. And in the end, how you look at something is more important than your IQ. There can be a lot of intelligent people in a room, but the person who you should listen to is the person who has a different perspective. It says, if we look at it from this way, it actually looks very different. And then the real truth is that you must always look at everything from multiple points of view. And that's the hard one, because we were all taught at school that there is a right answer. There is a right point of view. And in truth, there really isn't. There are multiple points of view, and you could argue you don't know something unless you know it from more than one point of view. So what do we do? Let's say it's a, a region, like your region. How do you make it a more creative region? Well, one of the things to do is to make sure it remains heterogeneous, that it has lots and lots of differences. Another thing to do is to encourage idiosyncratic behavior. There's an expression in the Far East, it happens in Japan and China, I believe. Both countries use the same expression about the nail, if it sticks up, you have to hammer it down. It's exactly the opposite. You want people to be iconoclastic. Obviously, within limits, you don't want anarchy, you don't want chaos, but you want the differences. And the biggest thing that you can do for your children is not to stigmatize failure. Failure is the best learning process that you can possibly have. And when Romano Prodi was uh, the head of the EU, he asked me, what is the one thing I can do to change the EU and make it a more innovative environment? We happen to know each other from MIT. And I said, Romano, you do one thing, only one thing, and that is change the bankruptcy laws. As somebody who invests as well as other things, when I found an entrepreneur who wanted to do a project, if they had gone bankrupt and failed in a previous project, that to me was more attractive. Where in some countries in Europe, if that happens to you, you are finished for the rest of your life. And so there's some very, very fundamental differences. They don't have to be that extreme, but just in school with our children, to just encourage them to take more risk. Risk is one of the joys of life. 